Welcome everybody. My name is Mark Alcaraz, District 4 Commissioner and Vice Chair of Douglas County Board of Commissioners. Today uh, I brought some special guests in who I've I recently met uh, through an invite and I was so intrigued with their organization that I thought I'd bring them in so that our community knows, uh, which I know a lot of them, a lot of people do know as I've seen <laughs> from the other Saturday, but uh, so that our community, those who might live in different parts of Douglas County, uh, understands what this organization is doing inside of our county. So today I bring to you For the Kids Inc. Uh, it's Mr. Rubens Paul and Mr. Marco Price and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, For the Kids Inc. and what all they're doing for our county. So welcome gentlemen, how are you doing today? I'm good sir. So, <clears throat> doing good, doing good. Doing yes, good. So tell me, <clears throat> uh, a lot of people we had a, a, a walk the other Saturday, which a lot of people showed up for. Uh, I appreciate the invite. It was, uh, I, I appreciate you inviting me, and uh, I wanted to come and support. And I've, we'll get into it later. I'll discuss why I came and support, but you already know. But I just wanted to bring you in to have you guys tell a little bit about what For the Kids, Inc. is. And it is what you're doing uh, for a lot of our county, but it looked like maybe some things were in other counties or no, or is it just focused on Douglas? Uh, for the Kids GA um, started on May 16, 2020, to be exact. Um, it came from a combination of from when I started um, my career with the Martyr Police Department. Um, I saw a lot of teenagers, a lot of homelessness, um, and that that's how it came about. Um, and also, also, I remember I got a text from a parent about um, that could not be able to enjoy Christmas when I was working at Marta. And that's what kind of made me think, hey, since I'm helping these kids out here, I have to help the kids in my community is where I'm from. So along with that, I started um, for the kids. It was just a, I'm starting a nonprofit um, based off with, you know, what I've been through in life, what I've grew up, how I grew up, stuff like that. I grew up here in Douglas County. I played sports here. I went to school here. Um, and that basically what prompted a nonprofit to start. Um, and when I started it, I needed dedicated people to do it um, with me, which is where um, a lot of my team farmed. Um, and we had to reform the team because a lot of them took different career paths, had to leave the state, um, had to do different things with their personal lives. So that's where how for the kids started. Okay. And how did you bring in Mr. Marco Price? The Marco Price is actually one of our newest members. Um, the Marco has his own foundation called Checkmate. Um, and he's also a very dedicated supporter. When uh, we recruit people, we look for people who, who are dedicated to do it without having to be noticed. Um, DeMarco Price was always there like, how can I help? How can I do this? How can I do this? Um, I pitch him for this. Um, whenever we would post, like whenever we help the students at the schools, we'll post something. He's, be, he's one of the first people to say, pitch me in, I'll donate this. Um, I'll be there. So to me, when I, when I look at it from the top, um, along with when I decide with um, the president and the vice president of my nonprofit, it's like he deserves to be on our staff. Um, it's, he's not doing it for attention. He's not doing it to be, to, see, to be seen. He's not doing it for anything, but he's genuinely doing it to, to help this community. He's also from this community. He went to school out here. We, majority of us went to the same school. We went to Douglas County, went to Stewart Middle School. I'm not sure what middle school, elementary school he went to, but I went to Bright Star and North Douglas. Well, we got that in common. I went to Stewart many more years ago and okay. then graduated from Douglas. So, you know, us <laughs> that grew, grew up here. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, back back in those days, a lot of, there was quite a few of these schools that weren't here. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you my age, but <laughs> anyway, I, just tell you, I tell you, it goes back long enough to where I lived in Villarica, but my district was Stewart Middle School mm -hmm. and then Douglas. But, um, but your organization, as I was reviewing some of the things that you've done in your website, um, for the kids .com, correct? Mm -hmm. For the kids GA.com. GA.com. Yes, my apologies. For the GA.com. <clears throat> you do a lot of things for kids, not just those who are underprivileged, but you also do things to incentivize them to work hard. I notice some of the pictures that you have shows, I guess, lunches yes, where you went to Stewart Middle School. Yes, sir and provided them for, I guess, achievements that they had done. Yes, sir. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Tell us about what, what, you, what it is that you do for those kids in that, that particular part of your program. So 
as we refer to the kids across the tracks. Uh, I kind of noticed even when we were in school back in the day um, was kind of those kids are a little un unnoticed a little bit, you know. Um, so I started going back to I've, I've been in contact with a lot of the Stort teachers who went to Stort, who's left Stort Middle School, who doing other things and. Kind of when I started a nonprofit, one of the first things we did was a school drive, um, back to school drive, where we had at least 300, 400 kids show up to get free school supplies. Um, so, not too long ago, I reached out to um, Chick Fil A, um, and Chick Fil A actually sponsored us to um, free lunches for the students. Um, so, what we started to do was um, I reached out to the principal Kevin um, Kevin Jefferson, um, which used to be my assistant principal at Douglas County High School. So we're real cool, we have a bond. So it's kind of, I reached out to him about it, we talked about it and he was like, let's do it. So what I, I started thinking like, who can we give these lunches to? Uh, and we started talking, it was the first time we did it, we gave it to the students who, um, A's and B's, who had all A's and then some who had all A's and B's. Um, the second time was obviously the kids who were at the walk. And then this third time, since we have got the sponsorship, is going to be the students, I believe, I can't think of the, exactly what students they are, but I think the students who are achieving most at the school. So that's what it kind of is. And even not just with the Chick-fil-A, but other things, gift cards, Christmas drives, we have did, we did one in December. We just try to get the kids to understand, like, we're here for them. Um, a lot of the kids, when you sit down, I'm not too much older than them, so when I sit down and talk to them, it's just like they feel nobody's there. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when we get the chance to connect with them, and it's like, like I kind of mentioned to you at the walk, um, we dress similar to them. We talk similar to them. We look similar to them. We're in the same age group. We talk about sports and stuff like that. So it's like they tend to listen to us. Even if it's not 100% listening, it's like when we tell them something, it's just like, okay, well, he's about the same age as me and he feels this and what I'm going through. So it's about their listen. So that's how those lunches come about. And even the market could put it in, put it in too. Uh, kind of just to piggyback off that, um, just what Ruben said, uh, really just us knowing exactly where these kids or just certain areas where they come from from like a personal standpoint um i know one thing we did me and ruben partnered up and we um we did a shoe drive uh, where we just kind of made a general post where like if you had any loosely worn shoes or not just too beat up we, we would go around and we would collect shoes because like we could remember kind of being in school and not having the best shoes or not being able to get the best shoes so um i think like back to what ruben said is is, is really just kind of a being uh, actually, I can feel you. I understand where you're coming from. So I think a lot of a lot of the things that we do do are just from literal personal personal relations with with the community. So yes. In my previous years, when I was younger, and I could stay up to the late hours of nights so with these kids, I did youth ministry, mm -hmm. and I know the importance of those connections that you can have with, that you need to have with kids. You're 100% correct. The, the times, I, I feel like time has changed a little bit to where it's harder for an older generation to connect and meet some of these younger kids where they are. 100%. 100%. And, you know, I, I'm thankful that there's people like you out there who can make that bond and that connection because the youth, we have a, as we're seeing it more and more from, my position where I'm at and working with our sheriff and being a public safety chair, I hear about a lot of these things that's going on in our community, but it's how do you solve it? <clears throat> uh -huh. How do you solve it? How do you reach them? That's a conversation we had many times. You know, the sheriff and the chief of police, they put together a great thing. They go out and they play ball with the kids, but there's still that gap. Mm -hmm. I feel there's still that gap. They, you know, it's, it, you get a you get a deputy who's come out there who's a little bit older than them, playing basketball with them. Yeah, they they have a great time and they make a great relationship. Right. But where's that bond connection? Someone that they can go sit down and talk with. Mm -hmm. Somebody they can confide in. You know, there's those people who are needed in your organization. To me, what you just stated by giving what the way that you're given you're making that connection and it's extremely important. We're gonna get ready to pause just for a moment break. We're gonna come right back mm -hmm. and we're gonna start getting in a little bit more in depth into regards to, I have questions for you that explain, or you know, so we can give them answers in regards to how your organization runs yes, and what all you do. So we'll be back in just a few moments. 
And we're back with uh, For the Kids GA Inc. All right, so now we're going to let's learn a little bit more about your organization. Can you provide me with an overall of your organizations in regards to your mission and your goals? The For the Kids mission, I won't read this because it's kind of lengthy, but it's to provide a better future for our youth today for tomorrow. Um, it's to be there for them. Um, it's to show them that it's, life is different. You know, like I said, um, a lot of the youth now are paying attention to the rap music, for example, and we are here to stop that. It's not to stop them from listening to it because, you know, rap isn't just one way. There's a, rap can be positive and both negative at the same time. But our overview is to help the underprivileged kids, um, the kids who, who need that help, the kids that, you know, parents who not really have the time to help those parents, the kids, and just to overview, just help children in any way that we can possibly do it. Right. It's not just children, but from K to 12, um, even out of K to 12, that's the ones who freshly go to college, to be able to help those and just be, provide what we can and how we can. It's funny you say that. I was <clears throat> in with, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with him or not, Corey Condre. It's uh, 104.5, I believe, my city. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's, a, it's a Christian station, but he and I was talking and he, on his station, I mean, he plays wide variety of music, but some is like a Christian rap. Right. Yeah. It's actually really good. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, back in the back in the day, my teenage days, yeah, I listened to it. I don't know, you know, uh, but everyone did. But you know, as I got older, you know, everybody changes. But I still like some of it. But his music, I was listening to Station, and I noticed, and he said, "You would not believe." how many, I guess there was a, a youth event and they had a bunch of it was Christian rappers. Mm -hmm. And he said they packed out the Coliseum. So, you know, I agree, I agree with you 100%. You mm -hmm. know, I'm not saying that rap music's bad or any type of music's bad, but I see where you're coming from that, that comment. Mm -hmm. It's what you allow to go in yeah. is what comes out. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's one thing we talked about, you know, when I did youth ministry, but uh, Getting back to your, your organization, does your organization collaborate with any other community organizations in the county or uh, government agencies? I'll start off by answering that. Um, we've partnered with multiple people. Um, as far as I can't list them off the top of my head, but we've partnered with 105.7 The Phase, which is a station in, um, based off Atlanta, and one of our members, mother and auntie, is actually the owners of it. Um, and we partner with them with a couple events, um, feeding the homeless, and that's that's another thing. We focus on the youth, but we also focus on the, the homeless. Um, we, the less fortunate, we go feed them from time to time whenever we can. We go out there to the city of Atlanta, wherever we can find, honestly, and we do what we do. Um, we partner with a couple of schools, Stuart Middle School. Um, we partner with Douglas County one time. We just different people, not really. Um, the agencies, uh, we've, we've, we've tried, we've, uh, we've reached out, but as of the moment, we have not partnered yet with um, any of the police agencies yet, but we would love to, because um, like I said earlier, um, the youth are more likely to listen to us, um, you know? And it's, and like you said, it's the gap. The gap that's, that's missing is, yes, um, the police are out there, you know, showing what they can do and playing basketball with them, but one thing is the age difference. And another thing is the stereotype in police right now. Yeah. Um, where, you know, the, the, the kids who are, like I'm saying, they're listening to the rap music, you know, and the rap music is telling them the opposite of what the police tell them. Right. So it's now, and that's a lot of the gap, where you may, when the kids think, hey, man, we don't want to talk to the police, we don't want to do this, right. but in reality, we're going into schools and telling them, like, the police is not what it is, you know what I'm saying? Everywhere you have bad, you have good, you know, and a lot of the times the good outweighs the bad which is what we try to tell these kids. It's like, and what also the police department needs to realize, it's not all the time that when you go to these events, you know, have your gear on. Make the kids comfortable with y'all. You know, when I was a kid, I loved the SWAT trucks. I loved the fire trucks. I loved the, you know, the, pol the canine dogs. So we, the kids want to see stuff like that. It's just now trying to find a way to get them excited about it again. You know, and a lot of, believe it or not, a lot of the kids don't hate the police. It's just about, about, oh, my friend said I'm not messing with the police, so I'm not doing it either. 
So that's what it, it, it boiled down to. But we would love to um, collaborate with the sheriff office, with PD. I feel like we would be able to bring the youth because um, not saying we just have the ultimate power, but my team, along with people we know that went to school out here, we have the power to, 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 to bring change to the youth. Yeah. I 100% believe that. 100%. There's a program, Chief Spark, the Dougsville City Police put on. It's called uh, Youth for Violence. Mm -hmm. And I know they meet. It's a rotation. You, I don't know whether they sign up or the parents sign up for them. But it's like an ongoing thing that they have classes, I believe, like once a week. They come mm -hmm. in and they just at the Dougsville Police Department. <clears throat> and actually, we had a Unity Day not too long ago, and the chief didn't know I was just attending, and the chief makes me stand up there and speak. <laughs> so, you know, at the spur of the moment. But the bunch of those uh, teenagers were there, and it was a really good crowd. I really, you know, going forward, I would like to help get you in touch with Chief Sparks because a lot of what you're saying and what you've recently done that we'll talk about here in a minute, it's the same goal. Mm -hmm. It's the same goal, but if, if we can get you guys working together, the power is going to be in the numbers. Exactly. And like you said, you've already made connections with a lot of these kids, and if you can get them involved in that to where Chief Sparks may, may not be able to get them, some of them to sign up. Mm -hmm. You know, different, different personalities connect with different people. Right. You can see that. I mean, I can try all day long to connect with someone, but if they're completely opposite to me, we're not going to have that bond as if someone that is, that they share an experience or they share something together or a personality. That's where you make those bonds. So I think that's, that's very important. I appreciate you saying that because I would like to help you, you know, get in with the police department and the sheriff's office. If you had not already done so, I'd be glad to help, help make that connection. Um, what are some of the challenges your, organi your organization faces uh, in serving under, underdeveloped or yeah, underserved youth? <clears throat> and how can our county support your efforts? I wouldn't really say, uh, from what I can see, we're facing challenges, and I'll give DeMarco a chance to, to elaborate on that. However, the reason I say that is because of my personality with the kids. You know, uh, when I go talk to them, I don't talk to them as if I'm better than them or I've never been in trouble. And actually myself, and I'm, you know, I'm not proud to say it, but I was, I was a troubled kid myself. You know, throughout elementary and middle school, even going into high school, I used to get in trouble all the time. So that's why I can easily connect with these kids. And it's just like, man, I was, I was you. You know, back when I was at middle school, we used to have ISS teachers. And you know, it's crazy that when a lot of the teachers that see what we have become, they're like, they're very proud of us. They can't stop telling us how proud of us because it's just like, I can admit, I was in ISS a lot. And we had this one ISS teacher named Ms. Neville, and what she would do was. <laughs> She would make us, I would not come back to ISS at least 10,000 times before we could leave ISS. And eventually, you got tired of writing that. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, eventually going into high school, too, we had Coach Resper. I was When I used to play football, I used to kick. And um, one time, I, I cussed at my teacher, and he made me bear crawl for, for like two hours. Ooh. And that was the draw yeah. for me. Where I was like, I'm going to stop getting in trouble. <laughs> yeah. And pretty much, this was like, that's why, I'm, to me, it wasn't really a problem with helping these kids because they actually listen. Like, um, I can give you another example. Last two weeks ago, I was at the school. One of the kids, he took a pack of nerds and dropped them all over the floor. And I kind of told him, like, you're going to clean it. Because to him, it's always the janitor's job to do it. It's the janitor's job to do their job, which is to clean, keep the school clean for y'all to come be able to come here and be comfortable. But it's not your job to make mess for them to clean. And with me doing that, he understood, like, you know what I'm saying? He understood that. I'm not too much older than him, but like I was really able to reason with him and explain to him why it was important for him not to do that, clean it up. All right. So, you know, I let DeMarco add on to that. Um, and just with that, like Ruben said, I don't really think we kind of just face too many like challenges. Um, more so if, if, if it was something that we would like to see more, um, definitely more parental involvement. Um, like when we yeah. post certain things or we, we promote certain things, like we're, we're kind of like in a way challenging the parents to make your kids come like let them experience something different versus I got to go to the courthouse and sit in this at this desk and, and, and just listen at a lecture like make your kids come out to the walk like let them enjoy themselves kind of just yeah. see that it's a different way kind of not that way we operate but like it's more relatable like it, it's not going to be what you would think it would be it's kind of you get what I'm saying yeah. I think that's that's really yeah to add on to that just to follow on Mark is like he said, 
lot of the kids, they already spent five days at school, yep. you know, listening in the classroom. A lot of them, that's not what they want to do. Right. So it's kind of like, yeah, let's have day parties with them. Let's, you know, let's bring them to the park. Let's have cookouts. Bring them to the park, have good music. Let them listen to the rap music they want. Of course, censored, you know, out of respect for the elderly. But let's li let them listen to the rap music that they listen to. Let's play ball with them. Let's, you know, have hot dogs, burgers, snow cones. Let's, let's do that because that's yeah. what they want to see. Right. Know? Right. Okay. All right. When we come back, we're going to get in and dive into a few more of these things, the questions I have in, in regards to your organization. But we're going to take a small break and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. We're here again with uh, For the Kids, Georgia. And now I want to talk to you about something because, you know, one thing I, I've seen as <clears throat> being a youth baseball coach that always really meant a lot to me was later on down the years, you see these kids now that they're grown up. Mm -hmm. I run into them and some of them are a lot taller than I am now. But <clears throat> there's nothing like hearing, hey, coach, and them coming up and giving you a hug no matter where you're at. I happened to meet at Alexander basketball game the other day. Jalen come up to me and he's now probably 6'5". I was like, what in the world happened here? <laughs> but those things, you know, matter. And then I always ask them, so what are you, do what are you doing now? You know, and I like to go back, <clears throat> or I like to hear from them in regards to where they're at today. And a lot of those, you know, as a coach, as in regards to what you're doing too, you you're making that bond with those kids. And in coaching, you always try to help form them to be a teammate, to learn how to give it their all, to be their best. So can you tell me about, you know, some of your success stories from kids that you ran into or some testimonials from the kids that you've came in contact with? So I got a, a couple. Um, I can start when I was at the Marta Police Department. It was just one individual. They referred to them as the Water Boys. Um, kind of built, started building relationships with all of them. Um, and when you start to actually hear them and their stories you got you start to figure like okay um it's, it's deeper than what you know what, what it's being portrayed as um it was just one of them and um he actually got arrested for something that he did um and actually not too long ago i seen him and he was just like man he sat down and talked and he said thank you for every time i would see them i would like one day it was like 10 of them i went across the street from art center station to da vinci's pizza i ordered pizza for all of them sat down and we had a conversation um, and a lot of them, basically, the guy was telling me, man, I thank you for, for doing that. And, you know, it kind of, at this young age, it kind of makes me feel proud because it's like, wow, they remember that. And mm -hmm. that's why I try and that's why we continue to try and do what we do because I know deep down they remember what we do for them. They remember. Mm -hmm. Just like I remember what the community used to do for me when I was little, Christmas drives and stuff like that. Uh, they will remember. Um, two weeks ago, we had a... Uh, student from Storm Middle School who, um, straight A student. Um, I got a call from the coach and she told me basically she was gonna get cut from the team because she couldn't afford her fee. And um, to me, that's absolutely insane that a straight right. A student was gonna get cut from the team because she couldn't afford the fee. Yeah. Um, so we immediately got on it. Um, we posted it and like I said, me, Mark DeMarco, a bunch of other people donated and we made it happen, you know, and. We've done that numerous to numerous students at Stuart Middle School. Um, we've impacted a lot. Um, I can give you another breakdown of when we had to actually get defects involved. Um, me and Serpiana Mumford, the president of our nonprofit, we went out to Atlanta to feed the homeless with the entire team one day and we encountered these kids. And um, Serpiana kind of whispered to me like, these kids aren't okay. Um, so we actually went back a day after we got the contact information, we texted them, um, they told us they needed clothes and stuff like that. We got them a hotel room for like a week, brought clothes back to them and, and having, having breaking down, going back to the hotel room, we had, we figured that those kids weren't safe where they were at. Yeah. So, you know, at the end of the day, when you encounter a lot of these kids, it's, you have to make a judgment. If, you know, me personally, if a kid is not safe, I'm not just gonna be quiet about it. All right. So we have so many testimonies. Um, I could be here all day, and I can even let Marco elaborate on testimony. Um, yeah, just as far as testimonials, it's um, one specific kind of for me. Um, I don't know, it probably was a couple of months back, and uh, one day I was getting off of work, and I was going home, and Ruben called me, and he was like, man, I just passed Walmart, and I seen these kids outside, and they with their mom, and it's cold, and, and he was like, I'm going to just pull up and see what's going on with them, and he went and pulled up, and come to find out, they were actually homeless, 
with nowhere to stay, with, with, with little amount of clothes to keep warm. And um, I can remember kind of from a relatable standpoint, um, I, I dealt with a, eviction before. So I know how that feels to kind of feel how you feel. So, I mean, with that process right there, me and Ruben kind of got on it immediately. Um, we came together to get him a hotel room. Um, we had a trunk full of shoes from the shoe drive we had. And uh, I remember this part vividly when Ruben FaceTimed me to show me the kids and when he popped the trunk in, and he was just like, just grab what y'all want, whatever. And they like, whatever? Like, whatever? Like, then get what you want. <laughs> and just seeing that excitement and just knowing that yeah. I, I've been there before, like I, I yeah. done felt that pain. It's kind of, that's, that that's one that really and probably will ever for, stick with me as far as testimony. Yeah, at, at, at right there will definitely sink in deep to the heart right there. Yes, see them yeah, yeah. smiling that like was, that. Yeah. And we actually have a video, I actually have a video <laughs> of, like to elaborate on what he said, when we popped the trunk, you know, they were thinking, you know, as young as they were, humble. Um, let me just take one pair of shoes and one jacket. Um, wow. When I was like, you know, take all of them. <laughs> and like, you know, I'm talking about like 12, 13 pair of shoes. And, you know, like I said, stuff like that, trust me, that will make them help somebody else one day. Right. Yeah. You know, you know, just coming from the standpoint. And honestly, I still have contact with them. Um, I still have keep in contact with them and they're in a better situation now, a better place. Um, like he said, man, it's just, that's one, of the, that's one of the deep ones. And another deep one for me was when I was working at Martyr. Um, three, the kid was like five. And it similarly relates to this because when we brought him toys for Christmas, he couldn't believe it. We bought him a trunk full of toys and he picked one toy. So when we kind of told him like, no man, all these toys is for you. His, his dad start crying. Like, I bet. Yeah, you know, and and it's kind of like stuff like that. And we do what we can, you know. Like with that situation, he was um, an immigrant staying with his five-year-old son. They used to sleep on the martyr train all the time. So similar situation. Got him a hotel. Um, I actually know I have an aunt who's uh, who's involved in immigration and stuff like that. So I actually get him good contact information, and he's. We, we we did what we could for him, yeah. you know, and I still like I still keep in contact with him. He kind of keeps in contact with me, and it just it just it just warms my heart when I know that people are doing better off the way before they were before. Yeah. All right, so that leads me into another question because of you, you're speaking about all this giving. <clears throat> How does your organization receive funding and support? To start with, um, self-funded. Um, I have a team who's very dedicated to giving. So at the end of the day, when you know we would post, but not all the times we met the requirement that we needed to do the um, events. So we were self-funded, especially me. I spent a lot of personal money on these kids um, because I feel like I spent four or five hundred dollars a pair of shoes. I can spend it on these kids. Right. You know, if there's a kid who, who has a soccer fee that's one hundred seventy dollars, and I'm buying sneakers for five hundred, why not cover that fee? You know, that's me personally, and that's my entire team. That's how my entire team feels. But throughout the years. We've had people donate to us. Um, we've had sponsorships. We've had, um, we have a, actually have a subscription. It's like a Netflix subscription where you can subscribe monthly. You know, you give as little as a dollar and as much as, as, much as you want. Um, people, we have a lot of people who's, who's on that. And we tend to keep um, going out and asking people to subscribe and, you know, keep going out and finding, you know, trying to find grants and stuff like that. And that's, this is how we're funded at this moment with the, the community. The people who support us, support us heavily and they donate to us. And that is possibly one, if I could say, our, one of our struggles is sometimes is the funding. Yeah. Um, you know, we, like at the end of the day, we're gonna do what we have to do to get the money, um, to, to fund the, whatever we need to do, if it's a kid that we need to help. And I know the people out there are willing to give, so I'm never worried about the funding. But if that was one of the struggles we'd have is, is funding. And, you know, we look forward to also partner with other people and apply for grants and stuff like that to be able to help more. The more money we can get, the more resources we can get. It's not even money. The more material, like if it's 100 basketballs I can donate to us to get to each right. kid, you know what I'm saying, 100 pairs of sneakers, just, it don't really always have to be money. But the more resources we get, the more people we can help. Right. Yeah, because I noticed uh, <clears throat> on your web page, it looks like you did a huge bag drive, yeah. this back to school bag drive. <clears throat> and that was one of the things I was wondering is how your organization was getting funded to do all the things that you do. Mm -hmm. And even now hearing this, these stories, uh, you know, I, I can see that there's even more given that's not even posted yeah. up there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so 
One more question before before we go into before we go into a break is uh, what do you see are the goals for your company or organization? I shouldn't say company, your organization in the next three to five years is to help as many kids as we can in our community, Douglasville, Douglas County, throughout the metro Atlanta, and even to expand outside of Atlanta. Um, I got people in, or in other states. We've um, haven't really sat down and discussed this, but I've been looking to expand, you know, different staff members in different states to help throughout other states. You know, I personally help country. I'm Haitian, so, you know, I've helped, you know, you know, send bottled cases of water to Haiti. Um, I'm actually in the process right now to buy a couple shin guards to send to, to help some kids be able to play soccer in Haiti and stuff like that. And also help Mexico and um, my brother um, who connected me with somebody um, when, I'm not sure if it was Mexico, but it was a natural disaster that happened around 2021. And we sent um, not a huge amount of cases of water and stuff like that. So we just try to expand over the years. The next few years, our goal is to just help as much as kids as we can, especially in the Douglas County community, so that we can stop all the nonsense going on. Okay. Before we go to this break, how can people, where do they need to go? You, you, Martin, you mentioned about a Netflix support. Mm -hmm. or, uh, I just always thought Netflix was TV, mm -hmm. but how can they access or where do they need to go to access to donate to um, your they organization? Can, they can visit our Instagram, um, Facebook. They can visit the website at www.com, forthekidsga.com, and under donations, they can click. We have Cash App, Zelle, anything, any form of payment you think of, we have. So, you know, okay. there's plenty of opportunity, plenty of ways for people to donate, as well as like a subscription, like I was explaining. They can subscribe to that if you don't just want to do it. Sometimes people say, hey man, how can I donate monthly? You know, we have people who just donate monthly. It comes straight out of your account. You don't have to worry about resubscribing. So as soon as you subscribe, it just comes out to your account monthly. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about the event to where we connected. Yes, so we'll be back shortly. Thank you. Okay, thank you for tuning back in with us. So I get an email from you, <clears throat> and it's not just to me, it's to a lot of county elected officials and our DA, our solicitor. You, you look like you went through the county <laughs> list. <laughs> <laughs> but <clears throat> it was about the youth violence walk mm -hmm. on March the 2nd. And immediately when I didn't take me two seconds to respond because one of the young men who got killed by that straight bullet on a New Year's Eve was Landon Smith who played baseball for me years ago. And great kid, you know, it really, it troubled me when I heard that. So let me ask you, tell me how you came about or what inspired you to do the uh, youth or the Nonviolence walk. So, the the nonviolent walk can start off by meeting Landon's mom, maybe two years ago. Um, on, I think the first year anniversary of Landon's passing, we did a tour drive. We uh, asked for the kids scheduled to do a tour drive, and when I was thinking, I went to school with um, Landon's cousin Miles, and they they used to call us twins, so. I was thinking like, man, we should dedicate this tour drive this year to Landon. Um, and I, I got in contact with his mom and we actually dedicated that tour drive to Landon's mom. And since then we've been in contact, you know, we follow each other on Instagram and stuff like that. And recently me and DeMarco decided, hey man, every Tuesday we're gonna link up somewhere, you know, usually Fabiano's downtown Douglasville, and we're gonna talk about what we wanna do for the city of Douglasville, for the county. And as we were talking, the discussion about the walk came up. Mark, DeMarco brought it up. Um, then soon after that, Landon's, I believe, I contacted or she contacted me and said his birthday was March 3rd or March 2nd. And immediately, I, I was like, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we could do the walk for Landon. We was brainstorming about ideas to do and, and boom, Landon's birthday is on March 2nd. And that's how the walk came apart. Um, after that, I met with DeMarco and Landon's mom. We, we discussed about how we wanted to do the walk. Um, we brought on the, on the entire team um, and we planned the walk. And immediately after that, we were trying to kind of have trouble how, where we were gonna walk, how we were gonna do it, what, would I, what, like, what I needed to do versus getting the permit to do it and stuff like that. But I knew 
as soon as we had it planned, it, it had to happen. So that's why you all started receiving emails from me. <laughs> I went on the county website and I, I CC'd all you guys an email and um, and thankfully it's a few of you replied back and actually you came out and that really meant something to us. Um, and I can let Marco break the rest down of how the walk came apart. Um, basically what Ruben said, um, like he said, um, one day we had already planned to just meet up and just just, just kind of just talk about like where we gonna go as far as what we gonna do or what can we do, and um, for some reason that that situation kind of was just poking on me, and I'm like, I, I want to kind of just chop it up about that. And so we kind of put it in place. Um, we got in contact with Landon's mom, and, and and I think the more and more that like we would meet with his mom, and to see just the excitement on her face that like people actually still care because I mean we know how typically a lot of things tend to die down and yeah. just kind of go on with the wind. So I think just seeing also the excitement on her face and the, the willingness and the whatever y'all need, and just let me know what I need to do. Um, that side of it kind of just really motivated and gave it that fire to really like, we got to make this happen. Like, we got to make this happen. So, yeah. Mm. How did you organize? Because there was a lot of people there. <laughs> How did you organize to get that word out? Because there, like I said, there was a lot of turnout and there was a variety of turnout. You had older adults all the way down, down to teens. I've seen some, I guess, some Stewart Middle School you, mm -hmm. they, uh, football players. Yeah, football they players. They their jerseys on. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like I said, we have a, a good connection. And when we planned to walk with Landon's mom, we initially um, said, hey, um, Landon lost his life and so did the other teens. So that prompted me to contact Rajanae Hill's mom and um, Sammy Moon's mom, um, you know, and of course some agreed and some didn't. However, we we did it like getting up we have a big following that's what i was kind of trying to mention to you earlier about the kids kind of like us having the power to bring them out is the following that we have um posted it on instagram we planned it we started posting um i can say this event that post alone was the the most excitement our page ever got as far as 500 reposts 10,000 views um, I don't. I don't even know how to explain it. That just to show you how much Landon's life, Ajane's life, Sammy Moon's life impacted this community. Yeah. It, you know, it made the kids like, okay, we coming. You know, people start hearing something like, we coming. What we got to do? What we got to donate? And we made it happen. It was really about just really posting. It really. It didn't take us much to to host an event. Yeah. It was just about us planning the event, getting the permits to do it. And posting it. I noticed <clears throat> at the event, you know, there was a lot of talk, and I can't remember the young lady's name who chanted the entire time we walked. But <laughs> told her, I said, "Dear Lord, you don't need a microphone." <laughs> she was loud. You could hear her from one that's, street over to the other. That's actually she, auntie. <laughs> she did a fantastic job, and she was such a sweet lady. Yes, sir. Um, but the violence walk, not only it was a about the violence but i noticed that there was a lot of talk about you know if you see something say something say something or get out of get the situation away, get out of the situation and you know that that's one thing it, it's it, it's really it's heartbreaking that in this day, day and time that's where we got to you know back when i was younger there was never uh, that it ever crossed my mind that we'd go to, and yeah, I went to parties in high school and all that too. We all got together, we was all kids one time, but there was never worry back then in regards to someone having a gun and pulling out a gun and start shooting. Yeah. But we are where we are. Mm -hmm. Right. So what your organization is doing to help change that mindset is very impactful. You know, I was watching, you know, <clears throat> from, a, from a sitting back, just watching how that whole day un, it unfolded. And I could see those kids engaging with you and your organization and all those around. And I heard them, I seen them listening. When you spoke, they listened. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what we got to get to with these youth is we got to let them know, you know, first of all, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. You know, back when we were younger, if we were upset and we, we fought. Right. Yep, yep. We just fought, but we're not at that point no more. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, one thing that I, I stated, because I served on the board of DFACs for a while, mm -hmm. and we always talked about with social workers that, you know, if there's one thing that we could do, no matter what it is, if we could just change the direction of one kid's life, then no matter how much time you put in, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Because you've now broken that cycle and you've got this one kid to think about things in a different direction and his life or her life may go in a different direction. But I see that in your organization. I see that impact that you're having with these kids because you can reach some that others can't. Mm -hmm. I, I can't go out there as a politician and go out there to one of them groups. They're not going to listen to me no more. Man, man. <laughs> yeah. They're going to sit there and may for a few minutes and they're going to be like, okay, he just needs to go. Mm -hmm. But you're making an impact in our county and our county appreciates it. What can we do to, can, from the county standpoint, what can we do to help you? The number one thing is support. You know, um, whenever we post, whenever we host, support. Um, of course, we can do it by ourselves, but at the end of the day, we don't want to do it by ourselves. We want everybody to be in tune, to be together, to make this unity, like, so that, like, when they see us, they see the police, yeah. they see the fire department. And when you think about it, a lot of these kids, when you think about it, what is law enforcement, what is the fire department going to be tomorrow if none of these kids want to do it? Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's why we have to be out there with you all so that they know it's like, if they see us out there with y'all, they're like, okay, it's cool to be with them. Right. You know, that's why a lot of things today is like, it's lame to kind of do the right thing. Yeah. You know, to these kids. It's what they think is they lame to do the right thing. But when they see people like us doing the right thing, it's like maybe it's cool to do it. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that's what the most that we need from y'all is support, you know, and kind of just having our backs on you know, whatever we do and us doing the same, having our backs on whatever y'all do, we, you know, we just conjoin with each other. Okay. You say something? A um, hundred percent with that, just kind of, not to kind of go back, but um, to the, 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 our biggest focus is to, to try to get the kids to understand that, for one, we're not talking to you or like at you. We're, we're, we're speaking with you. Like when we say something, it's not like, do this. It's like, I done been there before. Yeah. I know how you feel. I'm, I'm like, you can trust me, I can relate to you. I can, you know what I'm saying? So just that big part of just trying to build the disconnect of like these young kids feeling like they just being talked to, like, yeah. you need to do this. You need to go in there and sit in that versus like, come on out with us and let's have a good time and let's mingle and let's, let's conversate and let's, let's laugh and play and, 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 and we can still get the message across. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So that's, that's really it. Okay. All right, we, when we come right back, <clears throat> we're going to close out with For the Kids GA. Be back in just a moment. Okay, I want to thank you all for tuning in for this uh, District 4 dialogue with For the Kids Georgia. I greatly appreciate you coming and being here today. I think it's, it's very impactful to have you here so that our county can see what you're doing. Because if, if we don't, we can drive by and see the walk we can see the rallies, but unless somebody stops, they don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And when I seen it, I was impressed. I wanted you to come in, as I told you. I wanted to get you in so people can see what you're doing for our county. But I can tell you from our county, us as Board of Commissioners, we thank you for what you're doing for this county. Because what you're doing is making this a better place to live. Mm -hmm. And you're helping those quality of life for those kids who live here. And anybody who knows me knows I'm very youth oriented. And so organizations like yours, I wanna make sure that we highlight and all of that from the, us. I just wanna tell you, thank you. And we're gonna see what we can do to help get behind you. Thank you. Um, as a token, um, a very small token, yeah, you know, I wish we could give you the world to, to how much you meant to us for coming out there and actually walking the entire, and being out there the entire time. Um, we'd like to present you with a plaque that reads, Thank you for participation at the Stop the Violence Walk on March 2nd, 2024. Presented to Mark Alcarez, District 4 Commissioner of Douglas County. A quote states, I want you to know tonight that we as the people will get to the promised land. Martha Luther King, For the Kids, Georgia. Presented by Rubens Paul. See you. <clears throat>
I greatly appreciate this. <clears throat> it means a lot. It really does. Because <clears throat> if we all got involved, if we all did our part, what a better place this world would be. What a better place. This is going to my office, by the way. As soon as, as, soon as, this lead, as, soon as we're done, this is gonna, I'm, I've got a spot for this. But I greatly appreciate everybody turning in. And again, thank you. No problem. And I appreciate you tuning in for this District 4 Dialogue, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.